Hi, everybody. Uh, today we're going to be talking about module one, lesson six. So one, six. Um, and we are going to be working on converting customary measurement units. One thing I want to point out is as you are working through this video, you should also be doing the activities along with me. Um, so in your workbook, right? Here we go. Page 47. Ooh, sorry, 47 is where we're starting at. Another wonderful thing about in your book today is this chart. This chart's going to be really helpful to you. You probably want to cut it out and tape it into your math binder or cut it out and put it somewhere safe or rip out the page, something like that, so that you have this for further reference. Um, it shows some good conversions and will help you in the long run. So, like I said, hang on to that. Okay, you're going to want it. Um, vocabulary word today, we're going to be talking about a unit ratio, and it's a ratio in which the first quantity is compared to one. So we're trying to get down to one inch or one foot and then compare whatever it is to that, okay? So for example, if we were talking about inches to feet, right, 12 to one, so one foot, right? Feet to yards, we would say there's three feet in one yard. So that would be the unit ratio. Or if we were talking about miles, uh, feet to miles, 5,280 to one. Um, like I said, if you're following along in the book, it's right there for you, okay? So we're gonna keep moving along here. The unit ratio is our big keyword today. Let me just quick adjust this. So once again, we see the chart that is in your math book. This thing is going to be super helpful for you, especially if you don't do, um, if you don't remember the customary units of measure right like that. Okay, if you struggle with it, that's okay. A lot of people do. Gotta love America, right? Customary units of measure aren't just standard and straight like metric would be, right? And in 10 centimeters, right, or 100 centimeters in a meter, 10 milliliter, millimeters in a centimeter, that kind of thing. Metric units, super easy. Customary, not so much. Um, so like I said, you're going to want to keep this chart, keep it handy. Now, each relationship listed in the table is a ratio relationship, right? Eight fluid ounces to one cup, right? Two cups to one pint, two pints to one quart, and so on and so forth. Okay, so if we were talking about the ratio of inches to feet, 12 to one, that's what we would say, right? If we look up here, there's 12 inches in one foot. So the unit ratio would be a ratio in which the first quantity is compared to one unit of the second quantity. Now, like I said, we could write it like this, right? 12 to one, three to one, 5,280 to one, depending on what you compare. So what unit ratio can you use to represent the relationship between ounces and pounds? Well, we would want to say then that we would look back to our chart Right, the part that we have here, okay, ounces to pounds. If we look, one pound is 16 ounces. So we would want to have 16 to one, okay? What unit ratio could you use to represent the relationship between pints and quarts? So like once again, we're gonna come back here. Pints and quarts is down with our liquid measures here, right? There are, in a quart, two pints. So we would say two to one. And then what unit ratio can you use to represent the relationship between feet and miles? So once again, come back to our chart. Feet, there's 5,280 feet to one mile. So we would say 5,280 to one. So if I wrote those up on the board, right? Oops, ounces to pounds. We would say 16 to 1. Pints and quarts, 2 to 1. And feet to miles, 5,280 to 1. And that's how we would write each one of those unit ratios.
So if we're converting larger units to smaller units, um, we're going to do this in a simple way. Okay. Now, once again, gives us the option in here to see that customary conversion table, but because you're set, you have your workbook, you can just look in your workbook. So now so as you can see, reasoning about ratios to convert a measurement from a larger unit to a smaller unit. The numerical value of the measurement is greater when a smaller unit is used. To see why, considering the following problem. Suppose you want to know how many fluid ounces are in six pints. Okay, so we're doing this kind of problem. How many ounces are in six pints? One way to do this is to draw a bar diagram which is what we learned in lesson five. So first step is to draw our bar. Then we break it up into six pints. Each of these smaller boxes would then represent one pint. What we could do then is we could write in there how many cups are in each pint. Well, there's two cups in each pint. But remember, we're not done yet, okay? Because we're still looking for ounces. The next thing we would do is say, well, how many ounces are in two cups? Well, if we go back to our chart, back to our chart here, okay, it says that there is eight fluid ounces per cup. So we'd have to do two times eight, which is 16. So now we know 16 belongs in each of these boxes. Finally, we can multiply 16 by one, two, three, four, five, six. And we would understand then that the answer would be 96. There would be 19 ounces <clears throat> in six pints. Now, if you think that is kind of lengthy, I would agree with you. It takes a lot of time to draw a bar diagram. The other way is to use our equivalent ratio method, which we also learn in lesson five. Now, when we do that, we set up our ratio, okay? We set up our ratio as two to one, there's two cups in one pint, and we need to get to six pints. So the first thing we have to do is convert to pints. I'm sorry, to cups. When we do that, right, we can then say, okay, well, one to six is multiplying by six, right? So we have to do two times six, which is 12. Then once we get that information, we can put the 12 here and say, well, how many ounces? Well, if there is eight ounces in one cup, we put that here, one times 12 is 12, so eight times 12 would then give us the correct answer, which is 96. So you're doing this in a couple of different steps. First, you have to convert to uh, cups, and then you can convert to ounces. Okay. So let's go ahead and practice this. It says, Marco mixes a half gallon of fertilizer with some soil before planting his tulip bulbs. How many cups of fertilizer does he use? So now we're going from gallons to cups. And if we look at our, our chart here, right? If we're going from gallons to cups, we're going to have to work through quarts and pints as well. So. We could do a bar diagram, right? By dividing it into a half, because we only need a half here. We know there's four quarts in a gallon, so we only need two quarts of that though. Then we convert that to pints. Well, we know that there are two pints in every quart. And we know that there are four cups in every pint. Or, sorry, <laughs> it's four, um, two cups in every pint. Right, and if there was two here, two times two is four. There we go. So now we know that we have eight cups. That should be the answer to our question. Now, if we don't wanna do a bar diagram, remember we can use the equivalent ratios by setting it up, okay? So I can first convert quarts to gallons, right? There's four quarts in every gallon, but I only need a half gallon. So I only need how many quarts then? Well, what's half of that? That would be two. No one is somewhere. Now, if we only need two, 
Okay, courts, now we can continue on with that information if it wants to go. So now we know there are two courts and now we know there's two pints in every court. And if we have two courts, we're going to multiply by two to know that there are four pints. Okay, so our answer is four pints. Then we say, okay, well, there's two cups in every pint. And if we have four pints, I'm going to multiply here and we will then find out that there are eight cups. So our solution to the problem would be that there are eight cups in a half gallon. And that would be the correct answer. All right, we're gonna move on. Now, here we go. If we're converting the larger units to smaller units still, okay, a blue whale can weigh as much as three tons at birth. How many ounces does a blue whale calf weigh? It is exactly two and a half tons when it is born. So now we're going to convert two ounces here. Well, if we're going by weight, right? One ton is 2,000 pounds. We know that much, okay? So I'm gonna start my writing. Let me see, that's what I want. Writing my ratio, right? 2,000 pounds and one, right? And we need to get to two and a half, 2.5. So I'm gonna multiply 2,000 by two and a half, okay? If I do that, 2,000 times two is 4,000, a half of 2,000 is 1,000. We add them together, so this would be 5,000 pounds, okay? So we have this much. So we know that 5,000, pounds is the same as two and a half tons. Now, the next thing we need to know is how many ounces are in a pound. Well, if we go back to our table, we know that there are 16 ounces in one pound, okay? So I'm gonna write that out, 16 ounces in one pound, right? And it helps to label this pounds, pounds, tons, tons. This is ounces in a pound. Okay. And we need to put our 5,000 pounds here. So remember when we talked about equivalent ratios the other day, make sure that you're putting it in the same line, whatever it is. Well, what we need to do now is say, okay, one times what is 5,000? Well, 5,000, right? So we're going to do 16 times 5,000. So we'll do 16 times five and then we'll add our zeros on there. One, two, three zeros. Five times six is 30. Five times one is five plus three is eight. Wow, 80,000 ounces would be our answer for this problem here. That's a lot, okay? Typically we wouldn't use that kind of measurement for a blue whale, right? Uh, it wouldn't make sense, right, when we talk about appropriate units of measure. But, you know, we, it is important to understand how to convert that. So remember, we take one step by converting pounds to ton, or tons to pounds, okay? That's what we did here. Then we could, once we have pounds, we can then convert to ounces. So our answer here would be 80,000 ounces. Big baby. All right, now, what if we're going to go the other way? So instead of starting larger and going smaller, let's go smaller or start smaller and go larger. We can use the same process. Okay. Now, what if we wanted to convert 24 inches to yards? That's our first step here. Once again, we could use a bar diagram. Okay. Start by saying, okay, here's 24 inches, right? I drew the, drew the bar. I labeled 24 inches, dry, dividing the bar into 24 equal sections. Now remember that for every 12 inches, there is one foot. So we mark increments of 12, one foot, two feet. Then we say, well, how many feet are in a yard? Well, there's three feet. So I'm missing a whole section here. So we can think of this now like a fraction, right? So one, two, three sections two are shaded in. So we would say 
that 24 inches is two thirds of a yard when we use a bar diagram. Once again, you don't have to use that method. If that's confusing to you, I understand. So let's use equivalent ratios. And we're going to start the exact same way. We start with the um, <laughs> with the unit ratio, right? We put the inches in the feet. Okay, so there's 12 inches to one foot. We have 24 inches. So what am I doing to 12 to get to 24? Well, we are multiplying by two. So now we know that there are two feet in 24 inches. <clears throat> the next step would then be to convert. Sorry, keep hitting the button. There we go. And the next thing would be to convert to the yards. Okay. Now there's three feet in every one yard, and if we only have two, we can write that as the fraction two thirds. So the answer here would be two thirds or two thirds of a yard. So let's go ahead and practice this one. A male hippopotamus can weigh as much as 9,920 pounds. How much is this weight in tons? So we're converting from pounds to tons, which is great because we only have that one step to go. We know that there are 2,000 pounds in a ton. So once again, right, if we're going to use our equivalent ratio method, which is the easiest, Okay, we set it up, pounds to tons, 2,000 pounds to one ton. Now, I'm gonna put in the unknown number of tons as T, we don't know, right? That's what we're going to solve for. So I'm going to then put in our value here, which, sorry, was 9,920. So we're gonna add that in here, sorry, come on. 9920. Check. There we go. So then if we move on, we say, okay, 2000 times 4.96 4 is 9920. So we multiply one by that to find the value. Well, how did they get that? Right. <laughs> um, what you can do in this case because I doubt that you know right off the top of your head that you need to multiply by that. What you're going to do here is you're going to take this number and divide by that number, okay? So if we do that, right? If I take my calculator and I put in 9920 and I divide by 2000, And I enter 9920 and I divide by 2000, we would get the answer of 4.96. Okay, so that's what we know then would go for the value of t. Okay, you can simply divide this number by that number to get the correct answer. All right. So let's try another example. <laughs> um, so once again, we're going to do the same kind of thing. And the best way, like I've said before, is to use that equivalent ratio. There we go. All right, so a total of 35 pints of blood were collected from a local blood drive. How many gallons of blood were collected at the blood drive? So once again, we're going to start by setting up our ratio, right? Come back to your customary units of measure table, okay? If we're given pints of blood, right, there are, um, two pints in one quart. So I'm gonna start by doing that. 
two pints in one quart, and we have 35 points, pints, sorry. <laughs> so I need to now convert to that. Okay, so I'm gonna say, what times two is 35? Well, you can take your calculator and do 35 and divide by two to see what we're multiplying by, and we get 17.5. I'm gonna put 17.5 here. Then I know that there are four quarts in a gallon. So I'm gonna say four quarts in one gallon. Remember to label so that you keep your mind organized. If I have 17.5 quarts, how many gallons is that? Well, once again, we can take 17.5 and divide by four. Okay, so we're gonna divide here. So I'm taking 17.5, dividing by four, and our answer here would be 4.375 gallons. And that would be our correct answer, okay? So remember, you can use your calculator on here. Um, Make sure that you are still writing down your work so that I can see at least what you're putting into your calculator. So in case you do get the answer wrong, I can say, hey, you know, I think you forgot this number or you did multiplying instead of dividing. And I can help you with that if you're showing your work on your work paper. So go ahead and complete your homework from the McGraw-Hill site. Um, remember to hang on to this customary units of measure measurement chart. It will come in very handy to you, okay? So always, always hang on to your resources so that you can use them in the future. All right, have a great day.